So, if you decide to buy an electric car, what sort of driving experience can you expect? And do you need to change the way you drive? I suppose the best way to find out is to get in one and have a go. One of the first things you'll notice about driving an electric car is that they're really quite zippy. Unlike an internal combustion engine, which has a peak amount of power at certain revs, an electric motor has the same amount of power no matter how fast the engine is spinning. The measurement of this turning force is called torque. That's T-O-R-Q-U-E, not T-A-L-K like I'm doing at the moment. Electric motors have a lot of torque, which gives them the performance. Now, if you've driven an automatic petrol or diesel car, you should be 100% at home in an electric car. This little paddle here allows you to select park, reverse and drive. And needless to say, things like mirrors and indicators are exactly where you'd expect them to be. The other thing you'll notice with an electric car is how much quieter they are inside than a petrol or diesel vehicle. As the name suggests, the internal combustion engine works by exploding a mixture of fuel and air to drive the pistons. Now, manufacturers have done a great job in minimising the sound of all those explosions, but there's only so much you can do. An electric motor generates no explosions and only has one moving part. The result? Next to no noise and zero vibration. The only thing you hear is the sound of tyre noise and air passing over the car's body. Now, the most common question that everyone asks is, how far will one go on a charge? And clearly this is the biggest barrier that electric cars have to climb in order to gain general acceptance. But an enormous amount of progress has already been made. Now, this little fella was one of the first all-electric cars on the roads in the UK. It's the G-Wiz. Well, I say car, it's actually classified as a quadricycle, which means it doesn't have to meet any of the design and safety regulations of a normal car. It also only has a range of 40 miles. You know, but that said, if you're just trundling around a city net, as many people do, then it makes a very economic alternative to a regular car. It will only get up to 40 miles an hour, and if you ever manage to get it going that fast, the battery range does drop rather dramatically. <laughs> Lovely old gee whiz. This car has an 80 mile range, and it can also break the UK speed limit, which isn't a good idea. It has all the same safety features as a regular car, plus it's a lot bigger than those early pioneering electric vehicles, and has actual rear seats people can sit in. Basically, it ticks all the boxes if you're looking for a solid, reliable, economical, day-to-day -day vehicle, which is what the vast majority of us need. But if you're looking for a bit more excitement from your car, then electric power is still an option. This is the Tesla Roadster, a car that forever banished the idea that electric cars need to look geeky. It accelerates from 0 to 60 in under 4 seconds and can cover 200 miles on a single charge. Now this car is the Vauxhall Ampera. It's an electric car, just like all the other ones I've been driving. But there is one big difference, because under the bonnet, there is also a petrol engine. This is called a range-extended electric vehicle. That means you plug it in overnight, just the same way you get in in the morning, you drive off, it's electric. Its electric range is 30 or 40 miles. And then, if you want to keep driving, the petrol engine kicks in, it generates electricity, which spins the electric motor, and that drives you further. You can drive three, four hundred miles on one tank of petrol in this car. So the whole notion of range anxiety goes out the window. Next year, Tesla are launching the Model S, a large saloon car which in recent tests has passed the 300 mile mark on one charge. The good news is the vast majority of electric cars hitting the roads this year have all manner of handy features to help you maximise battery power. Most electric cars will have a couple of modes you can choose while you're driving economy and performance. This is controlled electronically by the car's computer brain, so in economy mode the acceleration is gentler as the car's control system limits the amount of energy you use. In performance mode the car sort of opens up the taps allowing you to drive with a bit more spirit. What's really important though is to use regenerative braking to the full. 
The great thing about EVs is that you can put power back into the battery when you slow down. Part 3 will show you more. For the vast majority of trips you make in the car, the range won't even cross your mind. But we are used to total freedom in our regular cars, so you do have to think a little bit differently when driving an electric car. You need to plan ahead, give yourself a little time, so you're not tempted to rush and drive aggressively. That'll help conserve battery power and ensure you don't arrive at your destination stressed to the eyeballs because you've had to drive like Sebastian Vettel because you left home ten minutes late. And if, like me, you have the unenviable ability to find roadworks and traffic jams wherever you drive, at least you can sit in your stationary car safe in the knowledge that you're not using any battery power, while those around you are continuing to burn expensive diesel and petrol even though they're not moving. And in an urban environment, electric cars help improve air quality and reduce noise pollution. Now earlier on I was telling you how nice and quiet electric cars are to drive, but that near silent ride can cause some problems. In places like this car park, many pedestrians walk about relying on their ears to warn them of a car reversing out of a parking space. When you're driving a virtually silent car, you do need to be extra vigilant. In this sort of situation, I always double check before I start reversing and then keep the speed to a minimum. So to sum up, Moving from petrol or diesel to electric power only requires minor adjustments to your driving habits. I can promise you that after a few days, electric motoring will come a second nature to you. Join me in the third film where I'll be taking an in-depth look at recharging your car.